Hi, everyone. Welcome back to these short uh, master classes on pleasure. I'm Madeline Dietrich, and I've been working on the topic, topic of pleasure for a number of years now. It grew out of a traumatic period for me in the late 90s when my 14 year old daughter was diagnosed with bone cancer and eventually died from her illness. The experience of caring for her during her illness was very challenging, but after her death, I had to find my way back to life and that required me to seek out ways to renew my spirit, restore my faith in myself and in the goodness of life. Curiously, pleasure played a central role in my trauma and grief recovery and led me to discover the healing medicine that it carries. Now, we don't, we're not used to thinking of pleasure as healing medicine. And this is part of what deprives us of its role in the healing process. What I've learned is that we hold misconceptions, ambivalences, and sometimes downright resistance to the experience of pleasure. Now, you might not on the surface believe me. You think we all want pleasure, more of it, right? But notice, if you will, how often it's hard to make space for pleasure in your day-to-day -day life. For many people, it takes a backseat to all the supposedly more important things, such as our relentless to-do list, what we call duties and responsibilities, the realities of the day-to-day -day tending to the business of living. But these many years later, I want to share with you some of what I've learned through my experience with pleasure. And today I want to offer a teaching on what I call the pleasure paradoxes. So I'm going to start into the topic of today. Today we're going to explore the topic of pleasure paradoxes. Paradoxes is where two things that don't seem compatible bump up against each other and they feel like a um, like a kind of a Rubik's Cube puzzle to be sorted out to find the unity within these apparently opposing um, concepts. But to begin to get on the same page of, with pleasure, you know, often we, we need to even understand what are we talking about here? And uh, I know when I've looked up in the dictionary, the definition of pleasure, it's a pretty bland explanation. So in this work that I do with pleasure, I thought it was helpful some time ago to develop a definition of pleasure as uh, from a place of what I'm talking about when I say pleasure. And this definition has been a work in progress. Uh, it keeps changing, and what I love is to offer it out to people and see how it lands with you. Does it make sense? Is there something you'd add to or take away from it? Because I love to uh, have questions, I love to be challenged, but most of all, I love to have a dialogue about pleasure. Because really, we're with the pleasure right now, I think we're in a place of reclaiming, redefining, re-envisioning what does pleasure really mean and what is its purpose so here's my definition and i'm going to go slow with it so you can take it in because it is much longer than what's in the webster's dictionary which was a short little phrase maybe a sentence long so for me pleasure is a sensory process experienced in the body connected to the ability to open to the goodness of life and let that goodness nourish and replenish us. I'll say that again, because this is the heart of it. Pleasure is a sensory experience, a sensory process that we experience in our bodies, connected to the ability to open to the goodness of life and let that goodness nourish and replenish us. Pleasure is an inner state we open to, we create alignment with and surrender to, because pleasure is beyond the will and ego functions. I like to say like orgasms, we can't make ourselves feel pleasure, but we can prepare the conditions for it to arrive like grace. 
pleasure is an involuntary force and we can use intentionality and positive will to develop the conditions that are amenable to pleasure. Pleasure is an inner state we open to, create alignment with and surrender to because it's beyond the will and the ego functions. We can't make ourselves feel pleasure, but we can prepare the conditions for it to arrive like grace because it's an involuntary force that we can use intentionality and positive will to develop the conditions that are amenable to pleasure. And additionally, this is a long definition, but it kind of holds the crux, the central core principles of the work I, I do that's called Unlock Pleasure. Pleasure allows us to orientate towards positive expectancy and away from the negative brain bias that we all have that has been a significant factor in our evolutionary survival and our evolutionary processes. And you know pleasure is around when you feel some of these hallmarks of pleasure that include increased ease and relaxation, more ease and flow with creativity, a sense of optimism and joy, and that feeling of being in the flow. I know you've all experienced that, and we know it happens kind of spontaneously and that we can't make it happen, but when we're in that feeling of being in flow with ourselves and others and life, it's a highly, highly pleasurable state. So let me know how this lands for you. It's my definition. It's a work in pro get progress. Does it work for you? <laughs> I like to be in dialogue with people in this reimagining of pleasure because that's what's needed. To consider the relationship you have now with pleasure and see what blocks you from a more fulfilling experience. This is the work of unlocking pleasure. And we're all on a continuum one of the things I, I always want to under, underline, underline, is that we all have experience of pleasure. We do. And that's part, that's part of the practice to notice where pleasure is happening for you. And even if it's small, even if it's fleeting, it's really important to notice where you can create the experience of pleasure for yourself and notice the conditions that allow that to happen because we want to build on that. We're all on a continuum of our capacity to open and receive and engage with the pleasure state. We can just keep expanding and expanding and expanding that. And then we might uh, use the word bliss instead of pleasure. But in the meantime, um, this work will help you to bring pleasure in all aspects of your life into your day to day. So let's now move on to the issue of the pleasure paradox. This pleasure paradox speaks to a major misconception about pleasure. I hear people bringing this up over and over and over again. Things like pleasure means indulgence, pleasure means getting what I want, getting it in my own way. And, and mostly, you know, getting it from out there. So if, if the people or life out there are doing certain things or not doing certain things, this is what allows me to have pleasure or not have pleasure. You know, if life is throwing me curveballs or somebody's not cooperating with my plan, then I can't have pleasure. And that's based on the idea that we get our pleasure out there. And this is where the paradox comes in, because yes, you know, just just to look around yourself in any moment, there is all kinds of pleasurable elements out there. And of course, we need other people. Uh, we interact with other people all the time in the course of our life creation. And we need other people for pleasure. But if we're holding this belief that they 
are holding the source of our pleasure, we won't be able to get there. Because you know, in part, we'll create a forcing current that puts out into the world an energy that says, you must, and fill in the blanks, you know, you life or you, the other, must do something that allows me to have pleasure. But if we go back to my definition that pleasure is an inner state we open to, that we prepare ourselves to enter into and surrender to, we have to be very aware of that paradox that yes, we need life to engage with. Yes, other people in our relationships and our connections with them are a vital source of pleasure. But if we bring that demand that says, you must make sure I have pleasure, it's a non-starter. And it's a non-starter because um, uh, it goes against kind of a spiritual law, and it goes in against the intrinsic nature of life and of love and of true connection with another human being or even our connection with life, because it's an interrelationship. It's not a dependency. I want to, you know, I want to pause for just a moment because, um, as we all know, relationships can be challenging, they can be really complex, but I want to just pause for a minute and um, really, really take in, you know, that we do need other people. Um, when we're so super independent that we need no one, our lives are very dry, we're also extremely fragile and vulnerable. And that makes us fearful. And when we're fearful, we tighten up. We're anxious. Life is stressful because we're only relying on ourselves. And there is a bit of the paradox as well. We do need to rely on ourselves and we need others. But to just think for a moment that sense of belonging, support, how we can share both our burdens and our joys with another, with our, the people around us, friends and family, our coworkers, our neighbors. I, I just love, I love a saying and I, I think of it often and um, uh, I use it a lot in my own life. It's this saying that says, when you have a burden and you share it, the burden becomes half its weight. And when you have a joy and you share it, it doubles. <laughs> so, you know, sharing is essential, even for our survival. You know, when we can share our burdens and we can share our joys and the burdens become less and the joy becomes more. So I in no way am saying other people and our relationship with life is not connected to our pleasure. Of course it is. However, pleasure can't be contingent on what others are doing for or with us or how life is going, whether it's going well or it's not going well, because let's face it, that is the nature of life. There are challenges. There is loss sometimes. There are pains of all nature, of emotional, physical, psychic, um, spiritual, pain is part of life. And we don't go towards pleasure to distract ourselves or avoid it. But we're learning about using pleasure as that healing resource, as a balancing, as a, an elixir to allow us to navigate the challenges, the challenges that will be in our lives more skillfully, more resourcefully, more resiliently. But to go back to the paradox, it's no one else's job to give you pleasure, to make sure you feel good. Even though our connections with others bring us so much pleasure, pleasure is an inside job. It's our responsibility to build that relationship, a real, a real, a relationship in reality, to open to pleasure and to create the inner state that brings us and allows us to experience pleasure. Sometimes the paradox is said like this. You alone must do the work 
too open to pleasure and you can't do it alone. I think that's a phrase that bears, that really bears some serious consideration. I alone am responsible for the, you know, the, what I experience in my life, including pleasure. And I'm responsible. I alone can do that work to make my life fulfilling and I can't do it alone. Put those two together. That is some of the most um, uh, challenging and rewarding work to learn how to be really self-responsible and also open and inter interdependent with others. So I want to, and I want to credit that phrase to Pathwork, because much of my understanding about pleasure has come from my many years of studying and teaching from the Pathwork lectures. Pathwork is a contemporary spiritual framework for personal healing and spiritual development and transformation. The teachings of this path are laid out in a series of lectures given by a woman named Eva Parakas, who developed the lectures over 20 years from the late 1950s through to her death in the late 1970s. And interestingly, these teachings have a lot to say about pleasure how to be in right relationship with pleasure, and that essentially pleasure is akin to the God state. Pleasure is a high, high state when we can really and truly open to real pleasure, true pleasure. It's a high spiritual state, which of course, like all spiritual uh, states can be, you know, are growing and growing and growing when we come to that place of uh, we replace pleasure with bliss. So for today's teaching, I want to talk from one lecture, lecture 157, which is called infinite possibilities that are hindered by emotional dependency. This lecture talks a lot about pleasure and the pleasure of, of a fulfilling life. Um, pleasure as good relationships, as um, satisfaction in our work offering to the world, um, in just how we are in life, that it's a fulfilling experience. But he, in this lecture, it often talks about pleasure as a, a code word for all of those things. And it talks about the misconceptions, the common misconceptions we hold about pleasure, such as it's selfish, it's not really that important. And especially to spiritual seekers, it's not spiritual to want pleasure. And the very old belief that sacrifice and suffering are a requirement to grow spiritually. Now, sometimes we do need to sacrifice. We do need to have delayed gratification. And sometimes we will suffer. We will have pain. We will have loss. We will have disappointments and they do help us grow spiritually. But this old idea that just to sacrifice and suffer for its own end, that that's spiritually advantageous is an old idea and it's a misconception. We can grow as much spiritually through the opening to the goodness of life as we do grow through facing our pain and the challenges of our lives in a self-responsible way. This lecture goes on to say that a human being cannot live without pleasure. We can't live without pleasure. That the body, the mind, the soul and spirit wither, wither without pleasure. The pleasure is the healing balm necessary for all growth and transformation to happen. And certainly at what, it's what moves us from a mode of just surviving to thriving. And now is a time in our great, you know, consciousness evolution that we need to embrace this idea of moving from survival mode to thriving mode. So I'll just pause there for a moment, let you take that in. And so 
I'm going to go on now to uh, a bit more of the background from this lecture. It's a really brilliant connection about why we put the source of pleasure out there. Um, most of us do it to some degree in some ways. We still believe that pleasure is our right to pleasure, our capacity to have pleasure exists outside of ourselves. And uh, in this lecture, it talks about how as, as children, as babies and infants and young children, we were totally dependent on our parents uh, to, to allow us to feel good, to, to fulfill our needs. We were totally dependent for our food, our security, our safety, everything, and including the experience of pleasure. You know, if our parents were helping us to feel good and to feel safe and to have our needs met, we experience pleasure. And we're totally dependent for everything, including our access to ple pleasurable states. And so a part of us stays stuck in that child mindset. I call it child, it's part of just child's consciousness. And we believe we're reliant on others. The parent substitutes as the source of all good things, including pleasure. You know, that part of us, and it is only a part of us that remains young and immature and childlike in that belief that pleasure is out there. So like children, we still believe we have to figure out how to get them these outside sources of pleasure to give us what we believe we need and want. That part of us doesn't know we're now adults and we have all the resources within ourselves to create and manifest beautiful, fulfilling lives that are pleasurable. And the lecture spells out a, a vicious circle that ensues involving, involving this emotional dependency. You know, pleasure nourishes us emotionally. And when we believe that our pleasure is contingent on a source outside of ourselves, it makes us emotionally dependent on others and on outer circumstances. And it robs us of, uh, of self-esteem and especially robs us of the connection to our own powerful inner resources, which this lecture suggests are infinite. This underlying vicious circle is the desire to get away from all these feelings of the child of helplessness, powerlessness, feelings of not good enoughness that feed the vicious circle. And how we sell ourselves out trying to get the other to give us what we believe must come from outside ourselves. The source of all pleasure is out there, not inside ourselves. But if we turn this around, let go of that demand on the outside and turn inward to allow the others to love us or not love us, give us what we want or not, give them the freedom to be as they are, which in turn gives you the same freedom. And there can be no pleasure without real love, which is given and received freely. From this place of freedom it creates a doorway to the immense inner resources that can guide us to creating what we need. The forcing current says you must. And that forcing current that you must blocks the creative flow. It saps our vital energy. And as we release the forcing current directed to the other or outside circumstances. We even say, because we even say to life, you must be this way for me to have pleasure. But we'll never win that battle with life, but waste our precious energy going in a futile direction. Spiritual law, the laws of pleasure, love, creativity, flow cannot be forced. Learn to work with them according to their intrinsic nature. Be one with that intrinsic nature of life, and that's the secret to our fulfillment. The pathwork way is to discover and write these unconscious hidden currents of misconceptions and misuse of our will 
and turn that energy around to go inward and find the source of everything you need within. The paradox is we do need others to support our lives, but we can't come from this forcing current or a belief that we're helpless little children dependent on the outside source for our well-being and our ability to have pleasure. And in addressing this mistaken understanding, we mature and pleasure as love is on and pleasure like love is only possible when we're a self responsible, aware of our own capacities, a healthy functioning adult able and willing to do our part to create what we need. Yeah, yeah a healthy, self-responsible, willing to do our part to create what we need. That's a precursor and an ongoing process in our expanding into pleasure. I often say only truly mature human beings can experience the depths of pleasure that are possible. So this teaching is, is very complex and, and it's nuanced guidance. And today I've touched on the broad strokes of the effects of a core limiting belief that underlies many people's inability to experience more pleasure. So I invite you to read the lecture 157 for more precise instructions as to how to find these hidden inner currents that block your fulfillment and the attitudes and practices that build connection to these infinite resources within. And this is one of the, the um, resources I use in the, in the work with Unlock Pleasure, the Pathwork Lectures, and the concepts and this vital core concept about helping people to experience the fact that they're, that pleasure is an inner state we learn to open to and align with and surrender to. So as I close this presentation for today, I want to offer you just a short little experience of that, give you a taste of what it's like to activate this inner state. It's called, it's a practice that I call take a pause for pleasure. Taking a pause for pleasure takes a very, very few minutes, as you will see. And we need to practice it regularly in our day to day life because it's what helps to nourish and activate that inner state that the truth of the teaching that all of our resources for fulfillment, joy, pleasure, um, what we need lives inside of us. Uh, that's sometimes a hard thing to really grab hold of. So this pleasure practice of taking a pleasure pause will help you with that. So let's begin and you will experience this a bit like a meditation. So again, I invite you just to relax back in your chair or stretch out on the floor. Maybe you're on your meditation cushion, but I invite you to begin by just bringing your focus inward for a moment. Again, go back to that, just kind of connecting with your body letting the weight of your body sink down into what's supporting it. Give you a few minutes just to shift your awareness, your focus. Bring your focus inward just for a moment. But as we prepare to go inward, I always like to ground people in the present moment, in the reality of here and now. So I invite you to, again, do what I call orientating to your surroundings. So as you're relaxing, as you're sinking inward, also just to very, very slowly, quietly, just taking a moment to look around what is in your immediate environment. Maybe there's a, a view out a window. <sighs> Maybe you're sitting at a desk, maybe you're on the couch. Just notice what's in your immediate environment. It's like coming into the right now, here now moment. 
And as you do that, I invite you to allow without any forcing or trying to allow your eyes to land on something in your surroundings. Something that's as a, of a soothing, pleasing, interesting, enjoyable something in your surroundings. It could be a color. It could be a sound or a smell. It could be a tactile impression. But let your awareness linger there for a bit, a bit long, just for a little bit. And just to say, it could also be something from memory. A recent time spent with a, someone you love and care about, an enjoyable time. It could be on a pla It could be a memory of a place on the earth that's special to you, where you go often. Could be sitting in your garden or in the public park. The memory of a quiet moment sitting in nature. So let your, bring your awareness, your attention to the thing in your surroundings that's catching your attention or a memory that's easy for you to go back to, to draw forward. And I invite you to use your positive will, your attention, your intentionality to just let yourself linger, linger there. And with soft eyes and soft awareness, again, there's no forcing here. You're not trying to make anything happen. You're just allowing your attention to land somewhere that's soothing, comforting, pleasing, enjoyable, maybe interesting in kind of a curious way. And let your focus linger there. Fully taking it in with all your senses and noticing how many senses come into play? Is there a smell, a sound, a taste, a tactile impression that goes with this focus? But now we come to the most important aspect of this practice, and it's to notice what happens inside yourself, in your body. Notice the breath. Notice the weight of your body in the chair. Notice your energy. And what are you noticing? Has there been a shift, even a small inner shift through this practice of allowing your attention to really alight, to land on something that's nourishing, soothing, comforting, pleasing, enjoyable, taking that pause for pleasure. And notice what happens in your body. Maybe you, like most of us, have those key spots in our bodies that hold tension, the jaw, the neck, the throat, the chest, the belly. You might even notice something shifting in your spine, you know, that runs from the very bottom of your skull down to your tailbone. As something shifted in your awareness. This is a practice. You might have noticed something really significant in this short few minute practice, or you might just notal, notice subtle little shifts. Or you might notice this practice makes you feel nervous and anxious a bit because I'm inviting you to, to challenge that negative brain bias that so often only sees the problems, only sees the difficulties, doesn't see the pleasure that's there all the time, but requires us noticing. 
shifting that negative brain bias for even a moment. And what happens in our physical system, in our energetic system. Most people will experience something that could be in the range of pleasure, even if it's small and simple. But notice how that interaction with the outer world and your inner awareness and willingness to go inside and quiet and notice awakens something. And I'd like to offer that that something is connection with this inner state that we can generate with our intentionality and our positive will and our awareness, our awareness and our consciousness is such a powerful tool. So that's the pleasure, the taking a pause for pleasure practice. You will have this uh, and the other meditation and the teachings on a recording that you can go back to many times. But today in this uh, short master class, I think you've learned a little bit more about the attitudes, the conditions that make it possible to open to that inner state of pleasure that we are responsible for creating for ourselves. But we need the tools, we need some guidance, we need support. And so I hope that uh, today's teachings will have provided some of that for for you today, and uh, it's been a pleasure sharing this with you. Hi, my name is Sarah Dubow, and I am a natural health care practitioner. My connection with Madeline is both as a colleague and an occasional co-facilitator but also, and most importantly, a participant in her pleasure workshop. Taking this course, I was really curious about how I could be in better relationship with pleasure in the ways that it truly really could unlock aspects of my well being, both physical, mental, and emotional. And what Madeline has done with this program is really taken this concept of pleasure and not only made it something uh, cognitive or knowledge-based, but something that truly is about embodying tangible experiences and exploring this topic of pleasure in your own life. Madeline is a seasoned, caring, exceptional facilitator. And what she has created with this pleasure program is outstanding. This program expanded my experience of pleasure. It helped to become a really powerful resource for me to work with my nervous system, to access aspects of my emotional life that I hadn't even considered. And it's brought so much richness to my experiences. I am fundamentally changed. I now consider all the challenges that I face in life in, in the framework of a bigger, um, a bigger framework, let's say a spiritual framework. And I'm so grateful for that. It's provided a lot of grounding and a lot of peace to me. I, you know, truly believe that Madeline taught me to fish instead of giving me fish. And, uh, I feel pretty good. Um, and I've moved forward in my life. And, uh, if you have the opportunity to attend a workshop with Madeline, then it is an honor.